Let's create a basic view to get a good general view of the model. Click New View and select Basic View. Then select a view plane, which is defined by two coordinate axes. The options for the view plane are XY, XZ, and ZY. Let's select one of these options. In the coordinate box, enter the view plane's distance from the global origin in the direction of the third axis. Because we chose the option XZ, in our case, the third axis is the Y axis. Let's leave the coordinate value as it is and then click Create. As you can see, the view plane is right on the origin. The distance between the origin and the view plane is zero. However, if we enter a larger value, such as 5000, there is now a much larger distance between the origin and the view plane. Let's create a view by picking two points. First, let's modify the view settings. Hold down the Shift key and select the Create View Using Two Points command. Select the Grid Elevation settings and click Load. These are the settings we want to use for the new view. Click OK to confirm. Now pick the first point. This is the origin of the view plane we are creating. Then pick the second point. The green arrow symbols indicate the direction of the view plane. Finally, let's display the views side by side. Let's create a view by picking three points. First, let's modify the view settings. Hold down the Shift key and select the Create View Using Three Points command. Name the view and set the view angle to Plane. Then modify the view depth as shown. These are the settings we are going to use for the new view. Click OK to confirm. Now pick the first point. This is the origin of the view plane we are creating. Then pick the second and third point to define the X and Y axes of the view plane. The plane view opens. Press Ctrl and P to switch to the 3D view. Let's create views along the grid lines. Click New View and select Along Grid Lines. First, select which views you want to create. Note that we are using these settings up here because we have a rectangular grid. None means that Techlet Structures does not create any views. One, first, means that only the view closest to the grid origin will be created. One, last, means that only the view furthest from the grid origin will be created. And all means that all views along the relevant grid lines will be created. Let's create vertical views of the grid lines 1 to 7. We will create views along the XZ axis only. Enter a view name prefix or use the default value. View names consist of a prefix and a grid label, for example, plan plus 3000. If you leave the view name prefix field empty, no prefix is used. Finally, select which view properties you want to use or use the defaults. Note that each view plane has its own view properties. You can load the current view properties with the option Applied Values 
where you can select one of the saved view properties from the list. Click the Show button to view and check the properties first. When you are done, click Create. As you can see, the views are created, but they are not visible until you move them to the Visible Views list. Let's move the view named Grid2 to the list. It opens as a plain view in a new window. You can rotate the view and see it in 3D. You can create views of almost any plane of an existing part. This can be useful, for example, if you are working with sloping structures. In the following example, we will create a view on the top plane of this rafter. On the View tab, click New View and select On Plane. When you hover the mouse pointer over model objects, Teclas Structures highlights the available planes. Select the desired plane, in this case, the top plane of the rafter. The newly created view plane is sloped and on the same plane with the rafter. Alternatively, you can use these commands available on the View tab. To use any of these commands, first select a command and then the part. For example, you can use this command to create a view from the bottom direction of the part, which can be quite tricky otherwise. Let's create a 3D view of a part. This is a great way to see a specific part clearly and up close, because there aren't many other parts around it blocking the view. Click New View and select 3D View of Part. Then select the part. The view rotates once to show the part from all sides. If you do not want the view to rotate, go to Settings and clear the Basic View Auto Rotation checkbox. Now let's create another 3D view. As you can see, this time the view does not rotate. Use the Default Part Views command to create four part views all at once with the same command. Click New View and select Default Part Views. Then select the part. The view rotates once to show the part from all sides. Let's close the basic 3D view so that we can see the new ones better. The following views have been created. A front view, a top view, an end view, and a 3D view. The views have been named accordingly, but the names are in parentheses, which means that these are temporary views. Rename the views if you wish to save them for later use. To do so, double-click the view and change the name, or at least remove the parentheses. Click Modify to save the changes. Let's create a view that shows a deformed part in undeformed form. This view type can only be used with beams and columns. Click New View and select Undeformed Part View. Then select a part. For example, let's select this beam that has been warped. Tecla Structures displays the beam in a new separate view in its undeformed form.
let's create a 3D view of a component. This is a great way to see the component clearly and up close because there aren't many other parts around it blocking the view. Click New View and select 3D View of Component. Then select the component. The view rotates once to show the component from all sides. If you do not want the view to rotate, go to Settings and clear the Basic View Auto Rotation checkbox. Now let's create another 3D view. As you can see, this time the view does not rotate. Use the Default Views of Component command to create four views of a component all at once. Click New View and select Default Views of Component. Then select the component. The view rotates once to show the component from all sides. Let's close the basic 3D view so that we can see the new ones better. The following views have been created. A front view. A top view. An end view. And a 3D view. The views have been named accordingly, but the names are in parentheses, which means that these are temporary views. Rename the views if you wish to save them for later use. To do so, double-click the view and change the name, or at least remove the parentheses. Click Modify to save the changes. Let's create an automatically aligned surface view. This can be useful when modeling bolt groups, stiffener plates, and hole penetrations on complex geometry. Before you start, ensure that the part surfaces are visible and therefore can be selected. Click Rendering and check that you are using one of these rendering options. Now let's open the Applications and Components catalog. Under Applications, double-click the Create Surface View macro. Then select the surface of the part. As you can see, a new temporary view is created. Now you can continue modeling in the surface view and see your modeling work being done in your original 3D view at the same time. When you are done, press the Escape key to stop the macro. After using this macro, you can use another macro called Work Plane Global to return the work plane back to the origin. Double-click the macro to run it. Let's create a surface view and align the work plane along a selected edge. This can be useful when modeling bolt groups, stiffener plates, and hole penetrations on complex geometry. Before you start, ensure that the part surfaces are visible and therefore can be selected. Click Rendering and check that you are using one of these rendering options. Also ensure that the Snap to Geometry lines or points snap switch is active. This allows you to pick along an edge to define the direction. Now let's open the Applications and Components catalog. Under Applications, double-click the Create Surface View with Edge macro. Then select the surface of the part. When you hover the mouse pointer over the part edges, a yellow arrow symbol appears, indicating the possible edges you can align the view with. The head of the arrow represents the positive direction of the x-axis. The origin will be at the start of the arrow snap line. Select the desired edge. A new temporary view is created. Now you can continue modeling in the surface view and see your modeling work being done in your original 3D view at the same time.
When you are done, press the Escape key to stop the macro. After using this macro, you can use another macro called Work Plane Global to return the work plane back to the origin. Double-click the macro to run it.